afternoon to all of you. Man is a social animal. Women are even more social animals. But the fact is that we thrive on communication, interactions, meeting people, talking to them, most of the time talking, not listening. And that constitutes the very basics. Human relationships, according to me, are more important than any other individual factor in terms of well-being of human beings. A classic example of that is that if the authorities want to punish somebody, he's a criminal, he is put in jail, but he is misbehaving, they want to punish him even more. You know what they do? They put him into solitary confinement. Now he should be happy instead of sharing a room with 10, 20 people, you know, fighting for space and this and that. Now he has a room to himself. But actual results show that this person can actually go insane if he is left alone without human uh, communication. That is the significance of, uh, you know, communication. Yet, most of us think that just because I can talk, I am able to convince people, I am able to talk to people, I am able to make people understand. But that is not so. There is a change since you, we have this topic of transformation. There is a very fundamental difference between change and transformation. The classic example that we use is the, you know, uh, caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Now, if any butterfly says, I was happier as a caterpillar, let me go back into the cocoon, there's no way she can go back, right? It's a transformation. Same way, human beings sometimes are forced into transformation, but we have the choice of selecting to be transformed. From my childhood, I remember a very interesting story. There was this king somewhere in Africa who was at war with Spain. There's this Mediterranean Sea in between. And one day he decided, let me cross the sea and go into the enemy land and fight them. So he raised up a huge army and he built dozens and dozens of boats. Those days boats were made of wood. So he got all these boats. He put his soldiers in that, crossed the sea and reached Spain. Once he reached Spain, he, the soldiers were getting ready to, you know, attack the enemy. But you know what he said? He said, hold on. First, I want you to burn all our boats. They were shocked. They said, why? His answer was very simple. If our boats remain on the shore, if the enemy gets too tough, you'll come running back and jump into the boats. You have an option. If your boats are burnt, you know that either you have to kill the enemy or get killed. There's no third option. And that is what is transformation. That's why there's a quote which says, burn your boats, so that you know that there's no going back into something. That is how this whole thing, you know, takes place. But like I said, somewhere we sort of feel that just because I know how to talk, I have command over the language, I may have a good voice or whatever it is, I take it for granted that I can bring about transformation in people but it doesn't happen. So, let me start with explaining to you, whenever you want to speak to somebody, you want to converse, you want to communicate, you want to interact with anybody, be it one individual, be it a thousand people you are giving a talk to. The first thing that is needed to be done, which is often neglected, is to check out what is the purpose of my communication. What do I hope to achieve by this communication? According to me, there can be innumerable reasons why I would like to communicate. So if you understand that your purpose should be clear and it should in some way complement the purpose of the other uh, person. And that other person, please remember, may come from a different background, different culture, different language capabilities, different mood of his own. Do I take that into account? And then and then only I will be able to get things uh, done at my uh, level. One of the classic things, those of you who are interested in literature, you must have read Shakespeare, the play on Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar is killed by his own people, Cassius Clay and Brutus, in public. And they tell, he was such a horrible fellow, he deserved to be killed. And the crowd is going on, you know, applauding them. Mark Antony comes on the scene. Mark Antony loves 
Julius Caesar. But if he tries to defend him, the crowd will turn against him. So his very famous words, those of you who have read it, friends, Romans, and countrymen, I have come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. He starts off with that. Immediately, they are with him. I won't bore you with the rest of the dialogue of Mark Antony, but it's worth reading it up. This is what I meant by saying that if you truly want to communicate, you should be able to understand. He understood the mood of the crowd. He understood that only if he goes round, he can come back. In a lighter vein, the same thing was depicted very beautifully long back in a, a TV serial which was called Yes, Minister. Look it up, it's still there on the internet. There's this minister who's a OK, OK guy. But he has a secretary who's brilliant. But whenever the minister makes a mistake and says something stupid, the secretary never corrects him, never says no to him. He says, yes, minister. That's how the title is. And then he slowly starts a conversation with him, which goes in such a roundabout way that finally the minister himself says, I think we should do it that way, isn't it? Yes, minister, you're right. That is what I believe that it should come from within. And to do that, you should be using simple words which people understand. I don't know why some people have this habit that they think that the more bombastic words I use, the more I try to impress. Everywhere it happens, whether it's courts, whether it's politicians, whether it's anything. But if you use simple words, I'll show you an example right here. Have a look at the slide. Do you think you have the patience to read this, see how much you can read? In other words, what that whole paragraph meant was, talk simply, naturally, and above all, make use of your personal experiences and avoid big words. That's it. Now, to be able to do that, you must you know, understand the importance of what you are conversing. If you really want transformation, if you really want to convince others, you should first be convinced yourself. There was a very interesting uh, anecdote. A priest told his parishioners that after the regular sermon, I am going to quote something which I read in the scripture, which can transform your life. It is so amazing, you know. You must wait and you must hear this out. People obviously were very impressed. It, it's so great, the priest is saying so. And then the priest opened the scripture and started turning the pages, looking this way, looking that way. At some point, one gentleman got up and started walking off. He said, where are you going? I told you there's something very important. He turned and he said, Father, if it was that important, you would have remembered it. You wouldn't be turning pages and looking for it. That is what is meant by the concept of if you believe in something, if you think that this is you know, effective, then it takes place. Also, I want to reinforce, I'm sure most of you know it, that communication, conversation, interactions are a cyclical process. I made a small slide for that, just to show you what this cycle is all about. There is a source, that is you. You have a message, you want to convey the message to somebody. You encode it, you channelize uh, it, you have to decode it, and you think that the message reaches the receiver but it doesn't, because there are hurdles in between. So what do you do? You check for feedback. If you are a truly good communicator and you want your communication to affect people, go to the last part of it. And feedback is not necessarily verbal. You see the expression of the people. As I stand before you and I talk, I listen through my eyes by watching you all. The moment I find that I'm not connecting with you, I'll change over. If I find that you are responding well, I'll go deeper into the conversation. So remember, 55% of communication intake is visual, not verbal. You have to listen with your eyes. And that brings me to perhaps, you know, one or two quick examples I'll give you. You've all heard of Dale Carnegie. How to win friends and influence people. Dale Carnegie said, you can spend two months trying to get somebody interested in you, you will not succeed. You spend two days taking interest in the other person, 
and he'll become your best friend. Such a simple mantra and formula of life. We all know it, but do we practice it is the question. There are innumerable such examples of people who have been doing that. Make the person think for himself. Do not try to convince the other person. Don't try to push your way through. Transformation does not take place unless it is coming from within. And that brings me to the last and perhaps the most important part of all conversations, and that is listening. Unfortunately, we have been taught how to read, how to write, how to talk. Nobody taught us how to listen. And that, according to me, constitutes the major factor in any interaction. In fact, God made it so clear to us. He gave us one mouth and two ears. So he expected us to listen twice as much as speak, right? But he didn't stop there. He gave us a mouth whose most comfortable position is the closed position. Try to keep your mouth open and sit. It becomes very uncomfortable. And he gave us two ears which do not close. If you don't want to listen to me, you have no option. You can't close your ears like you close your mouth. Despite that, we don't listen. And when we do listen, it is, as the great uh, Stephen Covey said, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. Now, listening has got many categories. There are different ways in which you can listen. I'll just show you three or four of those if we go on to the next slide. What I categorize as a non-listener is totally preoccupied with his personal thoughts and waiting to say what he wants to do. There are many of us who make that mistake. Then next, passive listeners. They hear the words, but don't fully absorb or understand them. Then we have casual listeners. They pay attention to the speaker, but grasp selectively what they want. Next are active listeners who are completely focused on the speaker and understand the meaning of the words without distortion. And lastly, we have supportive listeners who show concern and convey, I am with you. Ask yourself what type of listening you do. Believe me, that is the strongest weapon or the strongest tool for an excellent transformative communication that you do. There's a very good proverb which says, people will not remember what you said. People will not remember what you did. But they will remember how you made them feel. That is the crux of reaching hearts, getting on to people, and helping them to bring about a transformation from within themselves instead of you making the effort and trying to help others to understand. Keep communication channels open at all times. Make sure that there's a continuity in your conversation. If you have to stop, stop with the understanding that let us meet again, let us talk again. Keep that channel always open, never close it, and make them feel nice. The beginning of the conversation and the end of the conversation are the most important. If you are managing those two, you can afford to make a lot of mistakes in between but you will be able to leave the person with a warm understanding and a positive feeling. And that's all good relationships are all about. If you can practice that, sharpen that, and build this up, you will have wonderful relationships with everybody, and you'll never have to worry about what you are doing and how you are building that relationship. And I conclude with what I told you, there's nothing, nor, no other single factor which contributes to our well-being and to our success as good relationships. The foundation of that is this, what I have shared with you. Thank you very much.